Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my three pound beetle weight combat robot Kamikaze. Um, this is a lot bigger um, than Sergeant Cubble's my one pound combat robot and um, the design is very, very different. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the design considerations, some of the reasons why I did things and basically all the things that didn't work. Um, Kamikaze did not do all that well in competition, nor did I really expect it to. Um, so I'm gonna do a kind of a breakdown of why I built this, how I built this, and what things I would change for next time. This is what Kamikaze looked like after the match. As you can see, he's missing a wheel and um, the weapon's pretty beat up. The overall design of Kamikaze was based on a full body shell spinner that I never really got around to making. So it has this um, 3D printed uh, chassis or frame that sits inside and um, everything is kind of bolted to it. It's kind of similar to Sergeant Cuddles, it just has the one piece frame. So you've got the um, four drive motors in the corners. And then you have the battery compartment, the electrical compartment over here, and then um, the motors and everything go in these compartments. In the middle, you've got a um, outrunner motor that connects directly to the weapon itself. And um, I'll go into that a little bit more detail. The main chassis, as I said, is 3D printed. So this is all um, 3D printed ABS. And um, this is not 100%, this is only 20% infill. Uh, which means that when it breaks apart, it looks a little something like this. It's mostly hollow. So this whole frame only weighs about 130 grams. So it's extremely lightweight. All the weight is in this weapon here. In addition to the 3D printed chassis, um, these top plates here, these little um, armor plates are also ABS. These are laser cut ABS and it's just kind of this um, textured plastic. ABS is very good at impact resistance, but this is only 60 thousandths of an inch thick or 0 0.0060 inches, which is relatively thin and these broke off pretty easily um, during combat. They're just kind of um, screwed and threaded into the frame. Now the big feature about Kamikaze and the reason he is called this is because of this really big weapon here. This is 2.25 pounds or you know like 80 percent of the weight of the entire robot. A beetle weight class is three pounds total so this is the vast majority of the weight right here and um, with the outrunner motor underneath of it I think the weapon and the motor itself comprise like 85 percent of the weight of this entire robot. So how did I end up with this design? Well, as I said earlier, this was supposed to be a full body spinner and this is actually the hunk of aluminum I was going to use for the body for the spinner. So it kind of morphed a little bit from there. Um, I got really busy and as um, AVC came closer, I just didn't have the time to machine out something like this. And also full body spinners are kind of notoriously difficult to work with. Everything has to be really balanced. And if you get hit and anything gets you know off center, it just stops working and then you're just this terrible wedge sitting out there. So I didn't want to spend all the time machining. I wasn't going to machine a backup of that. So I decided to try something different and just you know whip something up really quick with a 3D printer, 3D print the chassis, throw in a lot of the electronics that I had um, spares of from Sergeant Cuddles. And then I just figured, you know what? I can just use a big old weapon to protect it instead of a full body spinner. And as Ray Billing of Tombstone always says, if the weapon's spinning, I'm winning. Unfortunately with this, the weapon wasn't always spinning and I wasn't winning. But that was kind of the concept behind this. It was just kind of a last minute, really quick thrown together robot. And I just ordered a big old hunk of 4140 and machined it out into a blade and just kind of put on the um, prototype chassis that I had for the full body spinner. When I came up with this design, the first thing I was worried about was this weapon just completely detaching from everything, stripping the motor and just destroying the whole thing. And I'll show you why that didn't happen. I added a couple little design elements into here to ensure that the weapon, when it hit something, didn't obliterate the motor and just shatter the chassis in half because, of course, that was my primary concern. So the whole thing is held on with these um, four screws. I think they're M3, but there's a little bit more to it than just that. If we take the weapon off, 
we can see that there's actually a machined pattern in the bottom of the weapon that corresponds with the top of the outrunner. So when this outrunner is actually spinning, it's not using the screws to transmit power into the weapon blade. Normally, if you just had the screws in there when this turns, it would rely on the shear strength of the screw and the screws could just shear completely away. But in this case, really all the screws are doing is holding the weapon down onto the outrunner and all the energy is actually transferred into the weapon from the frame spinning into this um, little pattern here. I call these the flowers. And actually there's another one on here, so let me flip this whole thing over. The motor is held into the bottom of the chassis with um, same size screws and these are just thread into the bottom of the motor. And what I did is I 3D printed holes inside the chassis, but I made them slightly undersized um, with relatively thick walls. And then I went and countersunk them by hand and then drilled them out by hand. So there's actually a decent wall around here and the countersink is actually relatively thick. So these hold on pretty tight. There, so you can see in the very bottom, we have um, a very similar pattern on the bottom that corresponds to the bottom of the motor. So same thing, when the motor is spinning, the torque is transferred actually against the frame into these little nubs. So you're not at all relying on the screw heads or just the sheer strength of the screws. And this snaps in there pretty tight so the bottom of the motor is actually pretty well seated in there and it's transferring its power more effectively you know rather than maybe kind of sliding around or shearing off these screws which are relatively small one of the things i really liked about this um, robot was just it was kind of really fun to design i liked the um, concept of the modular approach you know, I had the um, center hub that everything kind of routed around. I had the battery compartment over here, I had all the other electronics over here, and I had these um, two kind of drive pods. And the drive pods were very similar to the design on Sergeant Cuddles. If I take off these screws, you can see. So this um, armor just kind of unscrews and underneath we've got these um, two aluminum plates that were um, painted red just for show and um, they press down onto the motors and hold those in place but the motor has a little bit of room to um, slide sideways so they're not you know fully captive inside there and then the screws just screw through the armor through the aluminum and then um, I actually did um, really thick walls in the chassis for the screws to seat into. So that whole thing held those in place and it did okay. Um, this motor kind of got obliterated because it just slammed into the wall really hard and the whole gearbox just sheared off. But generally speaking, um, the motors were really not the thing to break. Um, I'll show you what broke on the um, first chassis. This is the first chassis. Um, this was after two fights. So you can see that um, it pretty much disintegrated in most places. The walls were not very thick on this. I didn't have much infill and it wasn't the best 3D print job in the world. And basically what happened is these um, two compartments over here just kind of broke loose. Um, when the weapon was coming around, I think one of these bent a little bit and it just sheared everything off. So uh, maybe for next time, I'll do something a little bit different geometry wise in the 3D print for the chassis. Um, the drive bays were actually pretty good. Uh, this one only broke off because it kind of um, came with the battery compartment, but overall it looked um, pretty decent and it's still pretty darn strong. I mean, it takes a lot to break. And I think I might do something different to kind of fuse the layers together. I was thinking of doing some captive nuts on the back. So when you screw down into these um, screw points, it actually clamps the whole frame down and stops this stuff from happening. So we'll see. Okay, enough talk about the chassis and all that. Let's talk about the weapon. So this thing was just a pain in the ass to make. It is 4140 tool steel. I started out with a 
big hunk of uh, metal. It was uh, one and three quarters inch square and you know, it was like that long. So I had to cut it down on the bandsaw, cut it to roughly the size that I wanted. And then I threw it on the Tormach and I used the um, passive probe to essentially find the center of that body. Once I found the center, then you know it could correspond to what I had in my CAD software. There's two um, major issues with machining this. The first one was sheer material removal. The um, starting block from this was over seven pounds once I cut it down. So I had five pounds worth of chips to remove from it uh, before I could um, you know, start putting the holes and everything else in it. So there was five pounds worth of chips in the bottom of the Tormach mill. The second thing was that this is slightly harder than uh, most of the stuff I'm used to dealing with. So removing that much material, once you just keep grinding away at it over hours and hours, the material itself starts to heat up quite a bit and you start to um, work hard in the material. So once I started getting down to this um, final layer, it started getting really, really tough. And actually, uh, this flower pattern here for um, holding on the motor, this was supposed to be a lot deeper, um, but I had the bit pulling out and I just had all sorts of issues um, towards the end because the whole piece was just red hot. My chips were just like this really pretty blue color because they were so hot and um, it was just a lot of machining to get it down to this point. Thankfully the cam was relatively straightforward for this piece. I started out with the bar stock in the vise and I did a simple contour on the top side just to um, get the contour of the weapon blade done and then I drilled out the holes from the top. Then I flipped it over and using the Tormach Passive Probe again, I found the center of the mass and then did all the operations on the bottom side. And that worked out pretty well. Um, the blade was a little bit unbalanced when I was done, but I mostly chalked that up to some of the issues I had with the actual machining. But once it was done, all I needed to do was put a rod through this um, middle hole right there. I just balanced it up on a couple of blocks and I could very easily tell if it was unbalanced just by which side would want to dip down. So that was pretty easy. This side ended up being a little bit heavier than the other side. So I just drilled out a little bit from the end, put it back on the stand, drilled out a little bit more and kept doing that until it was relatively balanced. And every couple steps I would put it back on the actual robot, spin it up, and by the time I got done with it you could tell that it was pretty well balanced. In the early phases it was really unbalanced and you could very easily tell because there was quite a bit of wobble. The final step to completing Kamikaze was to add one of these 3D printed safety cones to the top of the weapon. These just had a 632 inch screw rod um, shoved into the bottom of them and they screw directly into the weapon like that. And the idea behind these was to help and prevent it from tipping over upside down. This weapon is so heavy that if it tips upside down, which it's prone to from hitting things, it will just sit like that and there's no way to get it up. Um, back right side up again. So the idea is that these cones would maybe help it kind of self right a little bit and they, they did okay. They pretty instantly broke and in one of the competitions you can actually see Kamikaze dancing on top of one of these. So it was a good last minute addition. What would I change for the next iteration of this robot? Well, first up, the electronics were completely swapped from Sergeant Cuddles. So going from the electronics in a one pound to a three pound, they were a little bit underpowered. The speed controller for the weapon motor did eventually get up to speed, but I was definitely browning it out. I needed something in the range of a 50 to 60 amp. I was only giving this a 20 amp, so I need something much bigger for that. In addition, I'm going to drill some holes in the actual weapon blade to save some weight and transfer that weight into the body. I'm going to do more infill and do something different with the chassis. It definitely needs a little bit more rigidity so I can actually steal some of the weight from the weapon. In addition, the ABS plates here really didn't do exactly what they were supposed to do. I was hoping that they'd have some structural integrity, but they really didn't. So I'm probably going to replace those with Gerolite or possibly titanium, something else that's a little bit stronger and that will actually add a little bit of weight. So 
Once again, need to steal that from the weapon blade. Other than that, I think I'd probably just make those changes and then see what happens. I think with a bigger ESC to drive the motor and um, a little bit beefier chassis and um, better top plates, I don't think it would win, but I think it'd make for at least more hits without just self-destructing. So we'll see if um, in some future upcoming videos if I end up doing that or if I decide to work on something else. But in any event, it made for a good show. It had a couple really good hits and the crowd really liked it. So that was a win for me for a couple weekends worth of work. And check the description below. I have the playlist of videos for the two fights that Kamikaze was in. See you next time.